So, um, yep, I'm Gregory and the Artifact Street Map. So, if you don't know me and don't recognize me, um, I really like maps and I often talk about OpenStreetMap. So, someone maybe needs a photo of me doing this, so then we get a recursive photo of me with a photo of me. Um, I'll have to add to. But this is me talking um, to a load of artists. They didn't care about maps or computers, really. And I was telling them about OpenStreetMap. Um, and um, and yeah, why it's fun so from for artists. So um, of course, I've got to talk always about what and why is OpenStreetMap, um, and I won't give you that talk because hopefully you know if you're at State of the Map. But it's a project. It's made by many many people. It's up to date and accurate, which is good for a map data source. Um, and it's subjects unlimited because you've got all these different people mapping different things like cycle routes, like outdoor art sculptures, or you know footpaths and um, or railways. So it's really exciting in lots of ways. But also a bit I like to explain is the copyright. So the copyright license with OpenStreetMap is basically use the data is the intention behind it. It's this encouragement. Um, so I normally go a bit more into that. Um, when I spoke to the artists, I explained to them about Creative Commons um, because it's easier the nice illustration that um, that was the old license of OpenStreetMap many years ago. But it's it's this option of you've got to give attribution, and if you make something from OpenStreetMap data, you've got to share it in the same way. Um, so the actual license is the Open Database license. So if you're making art. You can, um, from OpenStreetMap data, because it's, if you want to make something that's map related or about where places are, it's really hard to do that by yourself. Try and draw a map of your town, you'll get it wrong. The scale will be off or you'll miss bits. So you can use OpenStreetMap. But if that's art, um, you do have to give attribution. You don't have to ask for this permission. You've just got to look at openstreetmap.org slash copyright. Um, and that links to the attribution guideline, which um, I don't know if it solves everyone's ideas of artwork, but it does talk, um, the attribution guidelines have a bit in 1.5.8, which is um, it must provide attribution on packaging at the point of sale and to the extent possible somewhere on the item itself. We'll look at this more, but if you made an artwork, a nice picture, um, if you're selling that, say that it's OpenStreetMap, or maybe if you've got a picture on a wall, normally they have the description, the artist, and the materials. I think it probably has to say OpenStreetMap there. Um, I don't know if that should be extended or if we need a lawyer to give more help. Um, it maybe depends where you are on your art career, so to speak. Are you producing lots of things? If it's a one-off, it's probably OK. Or you could ask the licensed working group. Um, but so we got this database, we got it, it's exciting, it's really good, we can make art from it. So, and it's encouraging us, the license, the legal thing saying use this data. Um, so what does OpenStreetMap create? Well, here's some examples. When I talk about OpenStreetMap, so many, so varied it's hard to put in. So um, I put in, you know, if you want to know where toilets are, I built a website called Toilet Map. There's a load of sat-nav different options, organic maps, um, and there's subject-specific things like open railway map. Don't worry about these exact examples. Like, these are just, but these are functional, I think. And um, so I'm, I would argue they are creative. I think to come up with the idea that you want toilets on a map, you need some creative thought or conversation. And... You can see in all of these, they've got different color things, schemes to represent different things. The, the sat-nav there has a, um, a night theme, and, and there's artistic and creative things in there. But um, they're functional, and that's a bit different, I think. You know, is that art? Yes, but it's not what I wanted to talk about today. Um, so you think we're talking about cartography, maybe? So these are all maps of OpenStreetMap. They're ones that I commonly use. Um, you could create a, a map style that's, um, that's inspired by the Spinal Tap movie, and then it's art inspired by art mixed with maps. 
Um, the open whatever map just randomly shows different tiles, which is kind of fun, which is quite cool. But in that, you can see there's different styles, like the pirate style. Some, in this screenshot, it's good because these are both cycle related, but they're different creations, different artworks, I suppose, by people. And they've chosen different colors or different things to display. And the watercolor by Stamen is another good example of maybe it's not that functional. Um, particularly, this shows the river through um, the town I live in, Durham. And actually, there's a few gaps in it because it's it's gone blurry. It's not focused too much on being specific. And it doesn't tell us exactly where the forests end. Um, but yeah, that's cartography. And it's still, that's obvious art to make from maps. It's to make a map. Um, but I want art that is inspirational, that that's really creative. And I am, I'm a technical person, but I love art in a way as a non-expert or professional. So I think it's this idea of creating new things. And the reason I wanted to give this talk was in 2007, um, Barry talked, he was actually doing technical stuff in OpenStreetMap because it was really early. He was trying to make codes that made nice curves in the map because, you know, it's all just lines between points and they get very straight. So he's doing that. Um, and this is always stuck in the back of my mind because this, I'm not even sure where it is. Um, in the UK, but it's a, a suburb, a small town. Um, and he was like, what What does this look like? And then he's like, you know what? What if I just animate it, and the video does play, what if I make it a beating heart? Where's the function in that? I don't know, but isn't it fun? Isn't it a bit creative and arty? And is anyone else doing that? Um, you know, why have we seen anyone do something like that since 2007? Um, I think it's cool. And he did a few other things. He was just playing and one where he made the shadows move, one where he tried to mix the function and he said, what if I've got a route from here to here for navigation? What if the roads to use just wibbled? Um, and you can find it on his YouTube channel. It, it's not that helpful or that pretty. Um, so, I, But the beating heart, it's the beating heart of where he lives, of the roads, the arteries of the town was quite fun. Um, and maybe it's got the function to tell the story. Um, so we can think about other mediums as a classic way to do art. What can I do? You know, some artists use paint, use oils or watercolors, some use sculptures. So there's a couple of examples I dug out here. 3D printing is now easy and people have printers. So you could just put a map file into a 3D printer. Um, you could just put a map on a on a tram on a streetcar in Toronto. That's kind of fun. Um, and they're, I think they're cool, but they're still functional. One to sell you a car um, and the other to um, help people with visual impairments. They're functional, but I think, particularly that 3D one, I love when you go to towns and there's the little model in the square of the, of the town that's 3D. So it is art in its own right. Um, but I want to, Challenge us maybe and challenge other people to it's this be creative. What can we do that's new, that's arty? What if we don't think about other mediums, but what else can we put a map on? Let's do something really weird. So um, the so Nikki in the US made a business called Soft City. She's like got a fabric printer, printed map blankets that you could buy. Um, and the um, the napkins or as she called them, mapkins. Um, so throw in a pun there, and people love it even more. But you could buy these, you could choose your place, and that was really cool. She also produced some leggings, um, which I think, oh, that's fun and looks nice. If you're that obsessed with maps and you wear leggings, probably good. But they were just a prototype, an artistic kind of experiment, um, and didn't quite go on sale, um, probably because they continue, and I don't know where you'd have to cut because maps don't continue unless you've got the whole world and the globe um but it's really when i was looking for the pictures of this for the talk um and i was always sad that soft city stopped being a business because i thought it was a great fun use of open street map she actually talks on her page about how it was not it wasn't going to be profitable fully but it was still worth doing because of the art she created and the enjoyment um and so that's good so that's 
that's wonderful. Maybe someone will do something new with a fabric printer. Maybe they'll do something similar um, because as we've seen, art can inspire more art. Um, we can, um, yeah, we can then also take the map. The other way to do art is to think abstract. So I didn't find the right example I wanted, but what if we just take building footprints or on the left, they've got swimming pools in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So these are just tiled, um, you know, they're just laid out. That's not where the swimming pools actually are, but that becomes a fun poster. And I think there was a trend a few years ago, but I can't remember, of um, doing that with buildings in a city. You take New York and it's all... They're ordered by biggest building to last. And you do have fun. You can you could just stand there, couldn't you, and go, oh, that's a that's an interesting poster. And you start to look and you go, oh, why is that one in a weird shape? Or most of them are squares, because that's swimming pools, you know. Um, maybe compare it to another another town. Are they different? Are they more creative or rich in their swimming pools? But it's a fun, and I'm sure if you know Albuquerque, maybe that connects, maybe the ones that are more unique, you know what hotel they're part of. Um, and so I looked on Etsy for OpenStreetMap. People are doing that because OpenStreetMap is now well known as an easy source of um, map data, and you can quickly generate it for any city or even set up a system where people can put in their city and then buy a poster from you. And these are different sellers, but they all look at the same, which is a bit boring. Um, Unfortunately, I'm not shown any in detail because when I looked in the description, um, none of them actually mentioned OpenStreetMap. So it's good they came up on the search, but they're not giving proper attribution. I would be more interested in buying them if they told me they were OpenStreetMap and the project that I've helped contribute to, you know. Um, so if anyone does have a good shop, um, let me know. I'll promote it. Maybe I'll buy a poster of Durham. Um, because it is a place dear to my heart that I'd like on the wall. Um, but but there is artistic style, even though some of them are just fine and black and white. There's others that use epoxy, use wood. So people could copy you, but if you're the first to do it, if you're creative, I think that's fun, and I think we should enjoy that and respect that. Um, and yeah, so abstract maps makes art, apparently, which makes gifts to sell in a whole business industry. Um, so I... A few years ago, had an attempt at art when I was um, doing a bit of my own freelance and consultancy, and so I had to make business cards. So I made these images. These are some of them. Um, so just the buildings of Durham without any roads. Don't use my business card for navigation. But that's fun to look at. I enjoy that because I immediately know which is the shopping center, where the river goes. Um, others of big cities like Newcastle with the footpaths. And this is one of my favorite images. So um, there's Greenbelt land, which if you don't know, if, when you've got a city, the local authority might define, this is a ring, normally a donut roughly, around the city that you can't build in, so that the city doesn't just expand without any green spaces, parks, or woodland. And on in Durham, I looked at the Greenbelt land, and I was like, hang on, it looks like a heart. So that data is from the local council, but actually the lines on it are open street map to give context. And I chose the colors to really make the point that it's a heart because our green belt loves our city. Um, and for me, this does have a function, but a personal function. It's a, it's a, we've got this green belt land. We should protect it. We should love our city we're in. We should love that Durham's um, surrounded by lots of green, um, which is lovely. And I can tell you, go to that big green because there's a really nice viewing point, um, good views of the cathedral. So it's really fun and good to see. Um, and yeah, I love it. And I've never, because I was just playing with data at that time, I made this artwork. Um, people are talking, you know, you can see the heart. It is, it's not north orientated. It's off by about five degrees to line up the heart. But I've never had anyone say, oh yeah, well of course it's a heart. I saw that all the time. Um, and I think only I've seen it because I played with that and I was doing creative stuff rather than just trying to make a sat nav or, or some other geospatial use. Um, so that was quite fun. Um, and I talked a bit about this when I did that talk in Durham to 
the artists, um, and particularly about the green belt. Um, and so my friend John, who's a very skilled watercolor painter, he used it to be inspired. So he's not even used the computer to make that. You can see I gave a printout of the map and we had a workshop. Some people made other things. Um, so it doesn't say open street map on there. He's only done that for his own personal use. But um, I explained to him how he could credit open street map and do that, um, as I talked about before. So he doesn't have to, you know, you could say it spoils the artwork if it then had some writing on there and a copyright notice. But he can, you know, I've told you it's open street map, therefore attribution's okay um, until someone tells me otherwise. Um, and so we've looked at soft cities that finished in 2013. We looked at Barry's art of the beating heart in 2007. But what recent artwork, other than this private little workshop, has happened? Um, has um, happened? What artwork's been created by OpenStreetMap? So I've got a slide of that. Oh, but it's blank because I, after proposing this talk, I did really try to find recent artwork. Um, from OpenStreetMap that use OpenStreetMap, and I couldn't find any. Um, so I don't know if it's just hidden. I'm going to talk a bit about that. But where is it? I want to know. Um, I've given you my Mastodon link, which will be on the end slide as well, um, or Twitter, so send me that. But um, So one thing is we've got the map showcase quite often at State of the Map. Now, normally, they're talking about a project or showing information, but I dug through past years. I like this one. It's again the tiled object, not the islands aren't that close. And it's actually explaining how they converted the data for a, a kind of virtual world. But I think that's art. We got this that Color Map was an online tool that again no longer exists, but it was cre allowing you to create a map of a place. Um, in black and white line drawing. So you can do that kind of mindfulness where you just sit and color in, which is great. So, but I think that's art in itself and quite nice just seeing the map in black and white. Um, but it's also helping people create map. And we've got our own map showcase this year. Um, so go and see it. Hopefully you have seen it because it's just outside this room. Um, it looks a bit like an art gallery, which I quite enjoy. Um, and you've got your, if you've got the free dot stickers in your bag, you can put a vote on each of your favorites. So maybe think of them in an artistic mind. Does you, not just what they've done and mapped and what the subject is. Does it inspire you? Is it, is it f like beautiful, basically, is what I'm saying. Is it pretty? Are the colors complementing each other? You know, maybe we should do that and look at that. And I think there's a couple there that I really enjoy that in some ways they're just printed off, but what they've included and what not is nice. Um, so yeah, do go and see them and uh, and appreciate them and read the descriptions. Um, and uh, so then what can we do now? So I made a wiki page because as I said, it's hard to find these pieces of art. So you can go to the OpenStreetMap wiki and type in art now. And it tells you a bit about the license if you're making art. It links to some other pages on the wiki to help you. Um, and maybe people will put in, I think it needs some images on there, or maybe it needs a category of art on the wiki. So if you've got a wiki page, um, you can tag it with art. Um, if you want to tell me about your art, just use the Sotomayu tag. Maybe we could start a hashtag OSM art um, on Mastodon, or I'm on Twitter as well. Um, you'll find me. and. Um, and so that's good. So hopefully there'll be some tweets. I don't think it's quite easy to talk about them all there. But hey, if you show me an art, I'll probably retweet it or boost it. I also wanted to put, we've had awards at State of the Maps in the past, not for the last three international conferences, but maybe there should be an award category that is, um, that's about art, that's just simply art. We've got the creative writing one, but what about artwork created from OpenStreetMap. I think that would be really fun. Um, I, as I say, I don't know if there will be another awards. Um, if you're interested in running that overall, there are people you can speak to. Um, and that slide hasn't worked, but it was boring anyway. Um, and we'll figure it out. It just had a long list of the links that I'll 
put somewhere or I'll correct the slides when they go online. Um, and uh, that by my time, that's exactly 20 minutes. So uh, have we got time for questions? That's over to you, isn't it? Thank you very much, Gregory. Are there any questions from the room? Yes. Okay. Uh, not sure whether you will let me, uh, but uh, I hope it comes. I made some decorational laser cut maps uh, for friends and family as gifts. Uh, if you let me know, I can even uh, show photos uh, on the on the laptop. Yeah, that'd be great. As I say, or post them or show me afterwards will be great. Or, well, I think this is all linked up, but we could. I think I think put a put a mastodon post or a Twitter will be good. Or Okay, well, maybe talk to me and show me afterwards in the break would be great. Is that another question? Hi. Um, do you know Map in the Wild? Map in the Wild? Do you know Map it? in the Wild? No. Um, do you know the Geomob people? Um, right. That, uh, yeah. So it's Stephen, is, I think. One okay. Of them. And he has a website where they collect uh, when people see... When you see maps, like randomly in the city, oh. and I think it can fit very much with this. It's a collection of images. Actually. That would be good. So, like I found the the picture of the map on the streetcar. Um, there is a wiki page. So, on the art page, yeah. there's a link to examples of open street map in the wild. So maybe we need to link those and get a I link to that. Because it's really a, bit, a collection of the, uh, data. I mean, it's completely random. People have found it on. Oh, cars, I love the so idea. I'll need I, to look for that. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Cool. Any more questions? Okay. Ah, cool. Thank you. So that keeps us on time, doesn't it? Thank you, Gregory. Round of applause.